A system of two blocks is accelerated by an applied force of magnitude F on the frictionless horizontal surface shown below. The tension in the string between the blocks is... So the first step for solving this is to draw the free body diagrams for each of the blocks. So we're going to do that first for M1. We're going to note is the 6 kilogram block. So we know its weight, M1G, is pointing down. We have a normal force perpendicular to our surface. And the rope provides a force of tension to the right because it's being pulled towards the right. Now, block 2, which we're going to denote M2, has its mass, M2, its weight, M2G down, M2 being its mass, G, the acceleration due to gravity. Its normal force is also perpendicular to the surface. And it has a force of tension to the left because of Newton's third law. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So as you are pulling block six of six kilograms to the right, it's also pulling back on the four kilogram block with the same force. And then we have our applied force F acting to the right. We now write Newton's second law for both of these blocks. So first let's do it for M1. So the net force is equal to MA. But now we're going to break it into components. So for the y-axis, we have the net sum of the y component. It's going to be equal to MAY. But since the object is not accelerating up or down, it's not leaving the plane that it's on, we know its acceleration in the y direction is equal to 0. So the sum of our y components is going to be equal to 0, which will just simply prove that FN is equal to M1G for block 1. If we now look at the x-axis, we would see that the net sum of our x components is equal to MAX, which is in fact an acceleration that we are experiencing, some value of A that both blocks will have as they move together. So if we write down what our F of x is, we would find that the force of tension is equal to M1 times our acceleration in the x-direction. Now, if we apply Newton's second law to the second mass, so again, net force is equal to ma. We do it for the y-axis. We show that, once again, it's not accelerating up or down, so the acceleration in the y-direction is equal to zero, proving, once again, that the normal force is going to be equal to the weight in this case. Final thing to do is the x-axis for our second block, which shows that the sum of our forces in the x-direction also contributes to an acceleration of m2 with an acceleration of ax, the same acceleration that block 1, the 6 kilogram block, will experience, because they're going to move together, so you can consider them as a system moving together. So they're both going to have the same acceleration. If we now plug in for the sum of the forces here, we would have F minus force due to tension. This F is direct to the right, force of tension is to the left, and that's going to be equal to M2 times AX. Now, we have to determine what the force of tension is. So we have to solve a system of two equations. So we have force of tension is equal to M1 AX, and F minus the force of tension is equal to M2 AX. So now, we're going to rewrite our equations again. So we have Ft is equal to M1Ax. And F, we're going to switch this around to be, we're going to add F of T to both sides, giving us force of tension plus M2Ax. Now you see here, we have force of tension and force of tension. So we can simply plug in this value for the force of tension here, M1Ax, into this equation here, giving us F is equal to M1AX plus M2AX. We can now factor out the AX, giving us F is equal to AX times M1 plus M2. If we now plug in our values for M1 and M2, we get AX times 6 kilograms plus 4 kilograms. If we now add them together, we have F is AX times 10 kilograms. And if we solve this for A by dividing both sides by 10 kilograms, we find that our acceleration, Ax, is equal to 
the applied force F divided by 10 kilograms. Now, we're not done yet because we haven't actually solved for what the force due to tension is. We now return to one of the two first equations that we calculated out. We can either use this one here, the first one we got, or we can use this one here, the second one that we got, F minus FT is M2 AX, or the first one, FT is M1 AX. The easiest one to use would be FT is M1 AX, because it's simply just one multiplication instead of having to worry about make sure you add or subtract correctly. So we're going to use number one for this final part to solve for the force due to tension. So we're going to rewrite down the equation that we know. So force of tension is equal to M1 times AX. Now we're just going to simply plug in the values. M1, we remember again, we denote it to be the 6 kilogram mass. So M1, we plug in 6 kilograms, and we showed before that AX is equal to the applied force F over 10 kilograms. If we now carry out this multiplication, we would see that the force due to tension is 3 fifths of the applied force. So F of T is equal to 3 fifths of our applied force, so 3 fifths of F.